So I'm Nick uh, from Penn Apps. This is Katie from Hack MIT. And we're going to do a talk about basically how to do sponsorship, Sci kind of sort of things we want to talk about that we think are important. So this is going to be a really, really quick portion of the talk where we do practical stuff. So find companies, email them, get money. And that's basically the end of the story. Uh, <laughs> That's our talk. That okay. was actually going to be the end of the story, except I had a, one more thing to say from earlier. So Jared earlier, I think, was talking about um, uh, how to find companies and how to email them. So a little more, some people seem not to know how that wor this works, so I was going to go into a little more detail into actually how to do this. So who here has not done this before? There was two hands. Who here has done this before? Who here has found a random company and emailed them? That's, a, that's like two thirds. Okay, so I'll quickly do it. Basically, step one, you go on LinkedIn. Step two, you search for their company name. Step three, you find the name of someone from that company that seems to be a recruiter. Step four, you try all permutations of that name using Reportive, which is an excellent Gmail extension that tells you when you have the names right and shows you information about them. And then you email them with your template or whatever. And if you're really fancy, then you mail merge a bunch of people. And if you're really fancy, you talk to Ishan about how you email like several thousand of them at once uh, using Odesk helpers. Uh, <laughs> he is sleeping somewhere, but you can find him after this and get him to tell you about that. Uh, cool. So how much does it actually cost to raise a hackathon? So it's about $100 to $150 per person. A little bit less for a high school hackathon. Um, a little more if your venue costs a lot of money. But Basically, this is consistent. It's 100 to 150 dollars for pen apps. It's probably closer to 100 for other hackathons. It's a little more, um, and travel, which varies a lot. We cover almost all of it. Other hackathons do 200, some do none. Uh, and then you want at least 10 percent buffer space or a very, very lenient source of funding that lets you go negative. Uh, this is even more important if you have cash flow issues. Uh, we are fortunate enough not to have cash flow issues because our school trusts us enough at this point because we grew organically, but depending on whether or not your school let you go red, you may need to get money in the bank much earlier than some other hackathons do. Uh, and now, Katie. Okay. Um, so there are certain things that you should think about when you're making your sponsorship tiers. Um, most of you have seen the documents that are now pretty standard. Uh, they all kind of look like Pen Apps document because that one was good. <laughs> And then and we changed it, and they copied us again. <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> um, basically, you want to maximize two things. You want to maximize the quality of hacker experience, and you want to maximize sponsor happiness. And uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to get up here and give yet another talk, I know, um, is because there's been a trend recently um, that focuses on sponsors as merely a source of money. Um, so that's, you, you see it naturally, uh, it costs a lot to throw 1,000 person hackathons and you say, how much money can we possibly get out of this one sponsor? Um, it, it, it relates to what Rob was talking about earlier with the uh, like 70K tiers um, and pricing out lower, uh, startups who can't afford as much. So, Always think about um, what sponsors can provide in value beyond just money. Because if you have a hackathon where every single sponsor is paying 5K, 10, or every single sponsor, the lowest sponsor tier is 5K, and then it goes like 15K, 35K, um, you're going to be pricing out some sponsors that bring a lot of talented engineers that will actually work really, really closely with your attendees and actually provide a high quality experience for them. Um, so think about perhaps uh, being flexible on your sponsorship tiers or creating one that appeals for those companies. Um, also, relating back to hacker experience, tech talks suck. Uh, I don't mean to call out hack tech, but there was some attendance issues with the tech talks there just because they were kind of off to the side. And, and, and hackers don't really want to take time out in the middle of the hackathon and go 
and uh, attend a tech talk they may or may not be interested in, but you promised your company some certain attendance. So be careful about that. Email spam sucks. And uh, most recently, there have been the tr there's been the trend for API prizes and bus sponsorships. Um, there have been varying uh, viewpoints towards that, but generally, API prizes are a good thing to have on a tier. And bus sponsorships, we did some custom bus sponsorships for Hack MIT, which ended up turning out pretty well um, because some companies aren't necessarily looking for the things in normal tiers like recruiting benefits and API talks. Some of them just want visibility and bus sponsorships provide that. So I just wanted to leave you with this, uh, which is basically when you're thinking about building your sponsorship tiers, there's a question of what do you include and how do you maintain the balance between what students want and what sponsors want. And I would say, think about what you would do if you had all the money in the world and did not need to raise sponsorship money and design your tiers around that to the point where you can get financial viability out of them. So maintain some balance, but really just think about the student experience and then build from there. So invite all the dev evangelists and mentors that would help the students out, um, have the API, whatever API uh, visibility that would help students build their hacks um, and then figure out what you would do from there and then bring sponsors in in a way that doesn't sacrifice what you built. So, thank you.